you already know this is Pawn Drunk Boxing, aka Mr. Moo Shine himself. Special guest, Phenom in the Sport of Boxing, Floyd Schofield, Kid Austin. What's good, my brother? How's everything going? Oh, everything is good. Everything good. Yeah, yeah. To a no, already got your feet wet as a professional. Um, yep. I seen I seen a couple of pictures up. You've been sparring with the likes of Devin Haney, right? Lately, for all of them, all of them, all of them getting in that work. Yeah, how, how's that going for you? How how is it becoming a professional now? Shoot, it ain't nothing new. I always knew I was gonna be a professional when I was a kid. So it's like my dream is just manifesting, and you know it's nothing new to me. You know, sparring with them, you know, good. It showed me uh type of level I'm on and I'm up there like I'm up there that's what's up that's what's up super featherweight division mm -hmm. and you already know that's already a stacked division that then my my belts though they just so yeah. <laughs> say it again <laughs> say, it, say it again I said those my belts they just holding it for me oh <laughs> already already um but yeah that's a stacked division and and you're familiar with a lot of those guys you know, yeah. you know Shakur Stevenson as well. Mm -hmm. Um, you was you was working out with Adrian Broner right in Florida. Yo, A B. That's what's good. How, how how was it? How was it? Um, um, watching him prepare for his for his um last fight. And he he was focused in the gym. He was very focused. You know, he trained he trained super hard. You know, he had no distraction in this camp. Um, and I felt like he had a layoff, so that like his performance. I feel like he'll do better the next one. You know, but because he's a hard working person, that was a tough dude. He fought anyway, but he worked hard. That's what's up. And what do you what, what did you learn from? Because, you know, he's been he's been in the top of his game. And right now he's trying to get back into, into into the rhythm of things and get back. What did you learn from 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 these from those um, training camps and, you know, working around working with those other fighters? Well, I learned that most of the time, you know, as a pro. Fighters are going to try to, you know, rough you up. They're not going to fight clean all the time. And, like, they got to show me that, like, when we were spar, like, it's a fight. Like, it's nothing to play around with or anything. So they taught me that the ref isn't going to help you. The only person that's going to help you is yourself. So. That's what's up. That's what's up. And, 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 for, and for those that 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 are not too familiar with you, how you started briefly in the sport of boxing, how you how you grow to love the game, um, who who presented you um with 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 this the sweet science? Um my dad, of course, my you know, they're nodding his head. My dad <laughs> Um and I really got into boxing only because like I would see him doing it as a baby and you know, I would mimic the stuff that he was doing. And you know, I, I don't really think he wanted me to box because he know he knows the dangers of the sport, but like you know, I just wanted to try so much, and I fell in love with the sport at a young age. Stuck with it. That's what's up. One thing I one thing I do admire is, is the is the father and son camaraderie um, combo in the sport of boxing. I yeah. mean, we see it with the Tiafimo Lopez of the world and his father, and Devin Haney and his father, the Guerreros, the Garcias. How 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 special it is working with your dad and him in your corner. It's real special because you know, like. That's my dad, so I mean, he get on my nerves, but at the end of the day, <laughs> he want the best for me, and he not gonna let me get hurt in the ring, you know. Opposed to another coach not saying he like would intentionally want me to get hurt, but he don't got my best interest at heart, you know. He's just there to get paid or you know have a world champion, but at the end of the day, the person that's gonna be there for me when I get hurt is my dad, so that's the person who I would want in my corner. That's what's up. Always, always keep your dad in the corner. Yeah. You know, in this boxing world, you know, there's going to be people be like, come on, you need a new trainer and stuff yeah. like that. Nah, nah, it happens to all the dads. I've interviewed, I've interviewed certain dads and they get, they get that, like, you know. um, But yes, the family, family, the bond is strong and it's special about that. I love, I love it because um, to me, fathers, fatherhood is prominent in the sport of boxing. Yeah. And, you know, we come from a community, we come from a community in which, you know, they say that there's, you know, a lot of people, uh, the percentage that it, a lot of a lot of kids are grown fatherless, and but when you see the sport of boxing, you just see fatherhood is is highly prominent in the sport of boxing, and yeah. that, and that's what's up. Um, so what's 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 well, how you how you could define your style? How could you define your style so far? 
It's amazing, to be honest. Shoot, I don't want to be giving y'all no secrets or anything, but, you know, the key is studying boxing. Studying boxing, you'll learn, like, your own style. You'll develop your own style from an early age. Yeah. But I feel like my... We know all styles. Yeah, we know all styles. So, like, I wouldn't necessarily say I have just one style. You know, I could mix it up. I could bang. I could... uh brawl, out box, you know, box or punch or walk somebody down, counter punching, yeah, so it don't matter. I don't think I got a style, to be honest. You could adapt to, you, you, you one of those fighters that could adapt to any style. Yeah, it's just whatever you want to do, that's what we're going to do. That's what's up, that, hey, that's what's up. Um, And that, that's good, because a lot of boxers can't do that. Some of them could slug it out, some of them could out box you, some of them yeah. don't got power, some of them do. Um, I'm... Hey, you already got you already got two stoppages, so <laughs> <laughs> so I already I already see I already see the the, the killer in you. Yeah. Um, so what do you feel about the landscape of the sport of boxing, especially the division that you're in? Um, right. I mean, like, yeah, we had we we right. did have we did we did have the um, last week on um, the right. Oscar Valdez yep. and Miguel Burchett. What do you feel about that fight? Well, you can't. You told me. No, nah, I said Burchett was going. Oh, so you lost. Yeah, I said Burchett was <laughs> going. Me too, me too. We both was wrong. We we, we both ate crows. Right. <laughs> I was like, um, that was a good fight. Oscar Valdez really proved himself in that fight. Like, oh, yeah, I ain't even going to lie to you. Burchett didn't look like himself. You know, he just straight walked into the punch. He jumped straight into the punch. But I'm saying how Oscar, like, set that up. He stepped back and then got his range and caught him with the hook. Yeah. But I feel like, you know, I could have grabbed that belt up. From that show. <laughs> I wish I would have that title. You got you got to have that level of confidence, you know. Yeah. Some people would be like, hey, you know, got to take it easy. Some people, you know, they could they become world champions. And what? Didn't Shakur become world champion like in 12, 13 fights? I believe so. And Tiffany Lopez, look at all the straps that he got I only in 16 fights. I'm trying to tell my family and my team, like, I'm going to have a belt at 10 fights. No, I'm going to try to have it. <laughs> I know I am. If not, well, I'm going to have it. You're going to win, but we're not going to If win. not, I'm going to have it before 15. That's all I'm saying. That's, hey, that's a goal. We've seen it happen. Yeah. We've seen it happen. Oh, so, yeah. I, hey, I got confidence in my brother. If you 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 up for that, I we good. <laughs> <laughs> we good, we good. They try to be like, nah, don't, you don't yep. want to go like 25, 20, 20, 20 fights in. That's 20, that's 20 fights. That's 20 um, um camps. Yeah. You know? I'm trying to get that title and go eat. That's what I'm trying to do. <laughs> I'm trying to take a look. And so what, what, what did, did you want, you wanted to go pro early or you wanted to try the Olympics? Man, I want I wanted to go pro. I believe I was telling my dad I wanted to be pro at 15 years old when I was just probably like 11. So, you know, it's just here now. So I'm excited. You know, it's a different feeling, especially from the amateurs, because in the USA boxing they got a lot of games. So yeah, once you get out that. of like 10 or five robberies, it's like okay, I ain't just gonna be sitting here fighting for free. I might as well make money off of it. And if I'm that good, you know, it shouldn't be no issue. So, you know, I feel like it's a good thing I turned pro early. You know, I'm getting I, it out of the way. I mean, that's a good thing. I'm, I'm, I do, I do. I'm one of those, I'm one of those um, personnel that I'm happy and I want all the fighters. I consider all fighters modern day warriors, modern day gladiators, um, and I want them to be compensated very well. And yeah. it seems, that, but it seems like in, in America, when it comes to the amateurs. They're not. They're not. There's not too many sponsorship like there is in other countries, like in Russia, right. Ukraine. And I could understand after they took the the headgear off, people just want to go pro. Why am I going? You know. Yeah, get... well, fight for free, and the tournament. I, this is the same thing as a pro. All I got is a tank top on and ten ounce gloves. True. True. I I, I also spoke to um Keyshawn Davis about that before. Davis. Yeah. But he was striving to he was striving to to really go to the Olympic game. But of course, the pandemic hit. Yeah. And how did how did the pandemic um you know um affected you? Not really, cause the yeah the team 
it's re really pushed me through it. And but the, the year the pandemic started, the only issue I had is people wouldn't take the fight. Like you know, you have guys be like, "Oh, I'll take the fight," then back out like the week later because fights would have uh, went through. So I feel like that was the only issue. The pandemic didn't really do anything, I guess, but took the crowds out. That's yeah. it. And what you think about the business of, of, of boxing so far? I feel like it's going good besides all that YouTube boxing. Wow. <laughs> wow. I, yeah, I appreciate the new odds, but I'm saying like all these, you know, boxers fighting MMA fighters and or YouTubers fighting basketball players. You know, it's like they coming in the sport, robbing the robbing the sport for the money. I don't appreciate. It. Now, at first, okay, so at first, I looked at it, like, I looked at it like that, right? But it seems like it's not gonna go away, right? I, uh, it's not. Everybody love it. But do, but I do feel like, do you know how it might go away if the boxer that's gonna be in the same car with them actually overshadows them and entertains? Yeah. I'm gonna get, so I'm gonna give you an example. Remember, it was KSI and um Logan Paul. Yeah, I think Devin Haney was on the on the on the undercard. Yeah, and he went the whole twelve rounds, and there was a crowd that was booing. And, you, you know, you ain't show out. You didn't. You didn't tell. I, I think he was he was put there. There's gonna be some new fans. Now it's your job to actually get these yeah. fans into the sport of boxing. But but it failed that night. Yeah. Now we have we have we have Kid Austin there. He. An, an explosive knockout, they'd be like, nah, this is fighting. This is boxing. You know, so I think I think that boxers, if they're going to be in the same car to YouTube, I'll shine these YouTubers to let the whole people that's watching know that this is... Yep, I <laughs> totally agree. I, put you on that I was going to say, put me on one of them cards. Put me on one of them cards, though. Hey, hey. Hey, recently, recently, um, you saw um Tiffany Lopez. He won the 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 purse bid with Cambosas. And that and that that was big. You heard about that? That's the dude with all the tattoos. He's supposed to be fighting, right? Yeah, that's gonna be a good fight. That's gonna be a good fight. You don't think so? He could fight the Cambosas. He ain't messing with Lopez. I know he's not messing with Lopez, but I'm just saying he could fight. Yeah, he could he he could fight. I think I I, I think probably because he's he's more uh. You know, but, domestic, domestic than anything else. Lopez gonna stop him, I believe. Devin and Lopez is the fight. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. I, but well, but what was what was special about it was that, you know, a lot of people was, you know, he was supposed to get paid one point two million dollars by his promoter, and a lot of people feel like he should just take the money that he's not worth in debt. But I bring it up because I bring it up because. I think it was inspirational for him to do that because he was letting it's like letting people know that nobody should dictate your value and worth. Yeah. You know? Cause you're gonna go you're gonna run into that. Every fighter runs into that to the point where, you know, you, you gotta determine what's your worth and what's your value, not the promoters, not anybody, not your friends, but you yourself and you gotta stand and you gotta um, you know, you know, um, Get, get 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 that you you gotta define that standard for yourself. Yeah. Um, what's 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 your, what's your goal business wise in the sport of boxing? But I feel like Tefimo should be able to ask what he want. He got all the belts. Right. So if he don't want one point two million and he want six million, I believe he should be able to get it. He got everybody got to fight right. him. He got all. Yeah, and, it, and, it, and, it, and it actually actually he got way more, way more than what he thought he that what they was trying to give him. Um, yeah, I, I believe that go for any fighter though. Yeah, and I think all, all, all the new fighters. I, I I do think that this generation. You know how they you, you have you know you 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 go and hear it all the time when people be like, oh, well, this gen back in the days is better than today, and but but in terms of business wise, and you know, there's a lot of fighters that are grown with their dad, their moms, and they have molded their their kid to the boxing world to understand the business of it as well. Mm -hmm. Um, and yeah, I believe that this generation is smart in the business side where you just ain't going give whatever to the fighter or the fighter is going to accept anything. Yeah, I agree. So I, so I think even with now you're two, um, two and oh, a couple of more years, I believe the boxing world is going to change in two or three years. You probably going to have your own promotional company. You already probably got be yeah, they already got one. It just got to grow now. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, it, it grow and meaning like 
you gonna go and, and do business with the network so the stream yourself right you know because i think i don't think that i don't think no no shout out to i mean no 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 pun intended to any promoters out there not you as a promoter, but I'm talking about the dinosaur promoters, the dino, the dino promoters. Um, they just don't promote like they used to. All these fighters just gotta promote themselves. They gotta, yeah. you know. Like so, and, you know, Foreman was promoted and stuff like that. You know, yeah, like it's like the fans and the fighters are promoting. The promoters just sit back and you know collect the money and give the money out. That's how I feel. Like. No. Facts, facts. Like when they say, "Yo, Buck Crawford, he should talk more and he should promote more." Yeah, but you're yeah. getting 20 percent to. <laughs> I'm giving you twenty to thirty percent to promote me. I ain't saying nothing. Yeah, you also know, so I coming out to see him fight. You know, he don't really got us uh, promote himself or speak if he don't want to. You know, people want to see Crawford fight. Yeah, that's what's up, man. Um, are you 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 plan on moving? That's a goal to move up the weight. Become a two, three, four division world champion, or are you, are you trying to stay super featherweight? Is, is, is to be honest, I'm trying to collect all belts until, like, say, like, if I stop fighting at 154, I'm trying to be undisputed in all divisions. And I'm not even, mm-hmm. I'm trying to be undisputed in every that's single nice. division I enter. Hey, hey, yeah. that's a lot of sanctioning fees to pay, too. I- <laughs> <laughs> that is. I ain't gonna leave though until I grab all the belts up. Like, I will not yeah. thirty until I'm undisputed, unless I just like grown up. Unless you grow, <laughs> grown, grown, grown out of the weight. Yeah. So. Yeah, and then the next, and then the next weight division is a stacked up division too, the 135. It is. And then 134. Yo, boxing is great right now. It boxing is, is hell is hell great. Fights happen. And now there's, there's new entities coming into the sport of boxing, like like Triller, yeah. Um, and if it's if it's just one app, it's gonna be another app, and it's just gonna be. Might be TikTok soon, for all we know. Hey, it probably will. Probably then you're gonna be YouTube, and there was Facebook. They didn't go the boy promotion have Facebook. Yeah. You gonna have your own your promotional company. You are gonna have a a, a a a person that know how to do technology, know how to do that app, and you are gonna do your own card. I, that's why. That's how I see boxing. Right. Take it direct to the consumer. Exactly. That's how I see boxing. I think these belt federations to get it get it together. Um, promotional company as well. I think. I think this this era, your era, is really gonna change uh, the sport of boxing. I think I already see the change, especially with this purse bid. We have Devin Haney as a promoter himself, partnering up with Matchroom instead of being under somebody. Mm-hmm. So I, I could see I could I could see that going. Um what what do what what do you do? Do you have any anything else that you do other than boxing? Or I eat when I'm able to eat. All y'all boxers love to eat. I, <laughs> y'all cut weight all day. <laughs> I truthfully I, I play a lot of I play a lot of video games at nighttime, you know, after I'm done studying my boxing and you know, training, I play a lot of video games. Yeah, but since, since you was in, in training camp with AB, you should, you know, you you know that eating too much is no good. Then you gotta, yeah. <laughs> so, you gotta suffer yourself with like like AB did. Yeah, <laughs> you know, all the fighters in like sauna suits and everything torturing themselves. I'm like, dang, do I really want to go through that? I'm like, yeah, I do. Yeah, <laughs> who's your favorite fighter? My favorite fighter coming up, yeah, Shakur Stevenson. Coming up, coming up, yeah. Steve. I mean, yeah, he already up, but like, well, coming up, coming I mean, up, like you growing up or coming up now in the way. Oh yeah, like coming up as a kid or yeah, yeah, coming as a oh, kid like, that you look. Yeah, up. Ray Robinson and Willie Pep, um, and Marvin Hagler definitely because he liked the way he's. I believe that's where he got the switch up from. Is nah, that, brother, nah, don't discredit my switch up. But go ahead, keep going. I mean. But, <laughs> Age is more, or I don't know. Nah, but, but yeah, yeah. And then, um, Sugar Ray, Ray, Ray Leonard, yeah. Duran. Duran, West End Close Fighting. So you're, you're a classic, classic, a classic. You you watch all the yeah. old tapes and, and things like that. I think you should like Sandy Sandler. Um, So you check that Sandy Sandler versus Willie Pep. That was yeah, of course. That's a classic fight. That's one of his best fights to me, I think. But well, that's the only one they really got on YouTube of him. 
you know, mm. all, all the, you know, they should have an archive of boxing films in my archive, yeah, in my opinion, you know, boxing films, because, you know, like, there's a lot of lost boxing footage that I know exists out there. Oh, I got you with a channel. I'm a matter of fact, I'll forward it to you. There's a good channel out there. That's oh, it. Yeah. Okay. There's a lot. There's a lot of fights. A lot. Of yeah, fights. cause like if I want to see a Sugar Ray Robinson fight, you know, it's only probably like three fights that pop up. But I know out in the world, it's probably like all of his fights. You know, somewhere. somewhere yeah. You got Hank Aaron. Um. Oh, uh, he he, nice. Yeah, I, yeah. I'm I'm a forward to you. There's 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 YouTube channels that there. Yeah, who's your favorite fighter growing up? I used to call them the three amigos. It was it was Roy Jones, Mike Tyson, and, and, and um Floyd Mayweather. Okay. That's a nice little pick. Why Roy Jones? Yeah, I was gonna say. With no disrespect. Yeah, I was gonna say Roy no Jones. disrespect no to Roy Jones. Disrespect. He's the GOAT. But why Roy Oh, that's yeah, yeah. Like if I was fighting or 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 <laughs> uh, working out, you know, I was imitating like Roy Jones. Roy Jones was mad at me. He, he, he did have a like pretty style to imitate or whatever. It was a dangerous one, but it's pretty good style, you know. He mastered it. Yeah, yeah. Roy Jones is the man. Mike my, my Tyson just, I mean, he's the he's he's like he's he's inspirational at the same time, like outside and how he talks and how he. Yeah. Roy very, Jones. Yeah, yeah, and um, Floyd. I like the uh, Floyd. Floyd was just like I used to look at him like if he was like Roy Jones' little brother, like okay. that's how I used to look. Okay. Floyd was a good pick. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, oh, no, pretty boy though, pretty boy, pretty, pretty boy. boy, pretty boy. I respect Money May, but I like Pretty Boy. I like Pretty Boy when his hands was when he let his hands go, he will slug it out. Yeah. Um, not too too defensive, but yeah. And old fi old fighters, old fighters. Um, I did like, you know, Pernell Whitaker, um, Frank, right. Frankie Randall. I did have a thing for Frankie Randall, um, the surgeon. And yeah, I like, man, I like too many fighters. That's what it is. I like too many fighters. Okay, so, you're going to add me to that list soon, just letting you know. That's right. Huh? You're going to add me to that list soon, just letting you know. Oh, of course, of course. <laughs> How, who's, what about you, like your coach Stevenson now, of today's fighters? Like, but you can't tell him that. He's in your, he's in your, in your weight division. I mean, I mean, once he got to see me, he got to see me. But no, like, Shakur might be done moved up to another weight by the time Floyd is in position. Yeah. yeah. That's 50. That's what? 30 fights away. Shakur might be done moved up by then. Probably. Hey, if, if he wants if he if he wants to be champion in 10 fights or 15 fights, he's still going to be in 130 probably. <laughs> yeah. Shakur, you know, I always say like, you know, it don't matter who I got to fight because business is business. But I feel like Shakur, that would be like, Fighting one of my idols, you know, it'd be like yeah, because everywhere, <laughs> and yeah, we grew up like taking pictures with him at the amateurs, and you know, he's always giving me advice, so I wouldn't be able to take that fight, I don't think, unless it's it was a lot it's a lot of it's money, a lot of money, and it's for like the last belt, like the undisputed championship. Oh man, too many friends in boxing. Ah, it's <laughs> like we ain't gonna see Earl spin. Oh, it's the connection. Okay. Let him know. He knows. Let's see, y'all. You, you can hear me now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah too many friends in boxing, man. Too many friends. Um, he, I uh, met no shit. Sean Porter. Oh, no. Nah, I don't agree with those, though. Those are different. Those different circumstances. We will fight. It's just going to cost. Yeah, it's just going to cost some money. We said if he's if he was in the way of us getting those belts, we gotta come get those belts. Yeah, but like as I'm saying, like I wouldn't go target Shakur, right. you know, collect for his belt. I'm gonna collect all the other ones first, then go after him. If he's still there. I hope so. I hope so. <laughs> I hope so. Uh, and how do you feel about the landscape of the sport of boxing? How you see boxing right now? Um, yes, yeah, a lot of money. Yeah, of money. <laughs> what the, what's the pros and cons? What what is the pros and cons? What how you from as as why you in the sport of boxing, but as a fan as well as the product of boxing? How you how you? What do you feel about For the pro? Like a you know a lot of money, the legacy, fame, being able to support my 
like support my whole entire family. Yeah, the cons is like person get die. That's all I see is the cons. It's a real fight. Yeah. It's not a game. It's not a game. Then yeah, and you know, be we want to go into the Hall of Fame, right? We're gonna go anyway. Right. Yeah, we gonna go anyway. What do you feel about certain fighters now saying that that the belts, there's so many belts and the, the belts is becoming meaningless? You know, the I, franchise belts, I, that, like the super funny. champion and all this other silver belts, like Mayans, diamonds, copper, penny. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's, that's, too, that's too many belts, like. But we want the main one. Yeah, we want the like the ones that's on top. We want the main belt. Like yeah. Now I get the the lineal belt because that's when you be when you, you, you get the, the get the Jack Johnson belt to beat the man. <laughs> you got to beat the man. <laughs> yeah. Man. So um, so yeah oh, uh, so the how do he feel about the landscape? How do you feel about the landscape? for boxing because you asked that like twice so i want to hear your breakdown i mean i like i like it i like the momentum right now i'm really intrigued with the with the younger fighters you know with the younger fighters because i feel like the prime fighters it's not even the prime fighters i, I believe that the boxing is so it's so stacked up with great talent that i'm not i'm not how you say it? i'm not what's the word what's the word i'm not frustrated I'm not frustrated. There was a time, like, let's say 2015, after the Floyd Mayweather fight and Manny Pacquiao fight, and then it's like, where boxing is going? The heavyweight division was still, like, you know, in a coma. Yeah. Right. Um, the emerge of, of of Anthony Joshua and Deontay Wilder, it, it, they was starting to emerge. Right. Tyson Fury beat Klitschko, but then he he left, but there was the heavyweight division wasn't there. It was only it's only one guy in the middleweight division that's, that's, that's really ringing bells. That was Triple G. Canelo, we was like, damn, what's next? Yeah, you know. But now, now it's like, I right, Bud, Bud and Spence, y'all don't want to fight. I, right, I, I'll go see Boots Ennis and his journey. He's yeah. gonna be fighting Sergey Lipin. Yeah, I'll see Vir Vir um Virgil Ortiz. He's gonna be fighting Maurice right. Hooker. The hundred and thirty is stacked. The ban the Bantam way is stacked. The one thirty five is stacked. I can see an undisputed at one forty. Um, the heavyweight division is alive. We can yeah, see right. so it's. Everybody's still in the shine from the 147. Yeah, and, and yeah, and 147. Yeah, I, I could still, I could still see. Hey, I'll if y'all want to, if y'all want to give me a, a a Thurman and Porter too or something like that. But we got 154 Jamel Charlo one one fight away to become an undisputed versus Brian Castagna if he fights him. We got Boo Boo Andre with Jamal Charlo just mix it up, you know, and unify 168. So I'm like, so boxing now. It's just it's, it's so it's so popping right now that I'm not frustrated. So it's really good. Yeah, true. Right. That's true. And right. now the the spotlight is really on the young fighters. You know, like if you look at 135, yeah. it's it's the young fighters. That's right. We, we, Can't even be mad. Yeah, we look at Lumachenko like he's the old guy, but he's really what 32 years old. But so, who? Like Lumachenko oh, at yeah. 135, he's the old guy. Yeah. But he's only what thirty two years old, you know. But so that's how I see the, you know, boxing. I think that, and I just think that this new generation, I think they're gonna move a different way. Yeah. You know, the crazy thing is the COVID forced a lot of younger guys to come into the sport that then would have normally have came in. Yeah. So like Floyd generation is supposed to be next generation of fighters, but because of COVID, he had to come in early. So it's mm. about to get real crazy out there with these these smaller weight classes, or with all the weight classes. Boxing gonna get real interesting with these group of guys that came out of the yeah. amateurs, and these older guys got trouble because these boys could fight. Yeah, so, that I, and that's how I see it. I'll be watching some of the eleven years old, eleven year olds. I'll be like, dang, they hitting like that. <laughs> Now that's that. I mean, that's the way I see it, and I do think that there's certain fighters that, you know, they they there's two type of blueprints I see. I mean, there is the money made weather blueprint, right? Mm -hmm. Um, and then there's another blueprint like, like uh, 
what well, let's say what Canelo or or let's say what Teofimo Lopez did. Like he he didn't have to fight Lomachenko. He just beat Richard Comey, but he wanted glo- he wanted to att- he wanted he wanted legacy. And then when you attain legacy, look at how you get showered. You know, yeah. and I think if more young fighters do that, create that type of that type of like back in the day aura. You know, I think boxing is gonna be good. But, uh, I can hear, but, I can but that's so true. But they got to be raised up that way. You know, yeah. they have to be raised up by a coach or a dad that was into that. From They can't just walk into the sport and think it's just going to fall on your lap like that. Mm-hmm. Cause they got to be conditioned to be um, a world champion or a great elite fighter. So it's, it's something. Y'all got a lot coming out this year in these amateurs, from these amateurs. How how many fights? How many fights you trying to you trying to get in this year? We fight every, every month. month. Yeah. For the next two years, we fighting every month. We already got the schedule put together. Oh, that's what's up. That's what's up. And it's gonna be what um different sp- different part of the country, or oh, yeah, 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 all over the country. Yeah. We gotta be updating his Facebook um to tell people each month where he's at fighting. So if they wanna come, and we are gonna have um links where they can watch the fights direct for free just so they could tune in oh that's what's up that's what's up what's the what's the promotion the promotional name um fs promotions floyd Schofield promotions but it's just fs promotions okay and it's just y'all y'all doing everything oh y'all oh y'all partner with another uh, another uh, we partner we got an advisor freeway rick ross he's our advisor and we got a we got a, a solid team of people and so it's gonna be real real good and real interesting yeah, that's good. That's good. Y'all already in the in already with the business. That's what I like. Yeah. I mean, right. not, like and, talking, and we and we got a professional coach that joined the team to help me because we're not gonna guesstimate. We said we got one of the greatest boxes of all time. We gotta make sure they're structured that way. So soon there will be announcement with the coach that we select, the professional coach that's gonna be with us. Yo. Oh, okay. That's what's up. That's what's up. I would like to hear the who's gonna be the professional coach. Is he? Wait, man. <laughs> Come on, man! You gotta give me the scoop, man. <laughs> they, they, they want us to wait for for a little while. We can't until um everything is reached in in two weeks. Then then you they know, gonna allow us to make that announcement. If, if if you text me a list of professional coaches from the top fighters, I'll tell you which one it is. If you can have that coach in that list, I'll give you ten coaches you can name. That's too easy. Ten. Ten. There's a lot of. The elite. Let me see. Where you where you currently currently at right now? Where you currently at right now? Uh huh. What, what do you, what, what's the question? Tex, tech. Are you in Texas? Are you in Florida? I'm in you... Texas. We in Texas, but wow. the, coach, the, coach, the coach is Andrew not from is in not Texas, Texas. Which I shouldn't have told you that because I already know the list. <laughs> right. I'm eliminated, so don't fall for that one no more. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Uh, I give you five, five coaches, and if you can name, but not right now. He got to text you. That can't yeah, be online. I know he got to text me. I know he got to text me. Yeah, I think I, I think I'm gonna guess good. I think I'm gonna guess good. <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a pretty. It's, he a, got good, a, it's a It's a known coach. Yeah, and he got he got an elite fighter right now that we can't say the person name. Yeah, and um, but it it's gonna be good. It's gonna be good. All right, I'm almost there. I'm almost there. I'm almost there. Yeah, keep talking. Nah, you done with it. All right, next question. Yeah. <laughs> trying to get slick. Hey, hey, man, I got to, like, I'm, I'm probably slick like you on the, on the questions. You want to slick on the gloves, but man. But I'll tell you this. When we can make the announcement, we'll schedule another podcast, and we'll, we'll make it on your show and talk about it. Put oh. it like that. All right, all right. All right. Okay, okay. So next question, uh, keep moving. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> oh man, so I mean, what's 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 because you, you know you got a young career, so it's, it's, yeah, it's so much, it's so much to it's 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 more about what's the future plans and what you expect out of your career and what you expect, um, you know, how to what's your goal outside of boxing, like when you when uh, helping the community, how do you how helping the community. Being humanitarian, how do you see yourself um, contributing to the community? All right, let's break that down in sections. The first thing, 
where do you see yourself in your career? Where I see myself in like yeah, my boxing career? In. Yeah, like as a boxer, your career, what, what do you think you'll be at the end of the career? Billionaire. Besides that. A, a dad. You <laughs> could. <laughs> Um, <laughs> the greatest box of all time. Tell them what yeah. you tell me. You're the greatest box of all time, and you're gonna show the world. That yes, of course. That was my affirmation since I was a little kid. Right. So let him know. I mean, but I thought that like, I mean, no, you gotta let the world career, know. Right? You gotta, you gotta put it out there to the world so you manifest that. Let them know what you've been saying since a little kid. You're the greatest box of all time, and they're gonna miss it if they're not looking. That's true. You made a video of that telling the world. Nah, that. don't don't okay, go I'm into detail. Saying, don't go right. into detail because they're nah, gonna be the asking next, for the video. The next part. <laughs> do, what do you do in the community, like humanitarian? I like helping the homeless. You know, because mm -hmm. me and my dad were once in that situation, and you know, seeing people who, you know, either they could have okay. had bad mistakes, or. I mean, made bad mistakes or, you know, didn't have people to help them in life. And now they're in a certain situation that they can't get out of. You know, it's sad to see. So you always wanted to, like, always want to help them. And I've always been wanting to help the homeless since I was a kid. So I feel like that's something I'll be doing and, you know, donating to, you know, different types of charities and stuff like that. Helping kids in need so they can get a chance. And you partnered with one. I know y'all remember the yeah, names, but tell about them. What do they do? They like build home, homes for the homeless. And okay. By like, do they have to pay? No, they don't have to. Yeah, pay. they don't have and to they pay. Teach them a trade. Yeah, and they teach them tra tra trades, trades, and stuff how, like that. How, how was that? How? Because I seen, I seen, I seen uh, one of the headlines, uh, mm -hmm. one of the videos. But I'm, I'm like, I'm like, nah, I don't, I don't want to click. I don't want to see the video. And I'd rather, I'd rather ask him myself. Mm -hmm. um, so how, how was the experience of, of being home? It was pretty cool to see, you know, they let us inside the homes and, you know, like they give them, they really give them a second. No, you, you, how was the experience of you being homeless? Oh, for me, I don't remember it, you know, because I was a baby. Shit, I remember it. He does. I don't remember it. Anything. It was not fun and it wasn't cool. Yeah, mm -hmm. I say it's hard, hard for a, a, a brother in the days. Imagine two brothers. It, it's a hard system to get through, but you could get through it. And so... Mm -hmm. What happened was I was in the music industry and Floyd was put up to the system because his mother was going through things. So I had to go through the court systems to get him and they made me get a normal job that couldn't pay the bills over our head. So after a while we got homeless, but we it, it was good support systems out there that helped us, friends and family, after a while. And we made it through it. That's what's up. That's what's up. Yeah, I, I have my own experience. I was homeless. I was homeless for 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 like I think it was almost like six six seven months. I was homeless, but in my my opinion, I think that was the best thing ever. Really? I, yeah. I mean, when you overcome it. Yeah, when you overcome it, that is the best thing ever. It makes you stronger. Yeah, yeah. When I overcame it, but put it this way, not even not even when I overcame it. Really, it was even after. Three weeks, no, not yeah, like like almost a month. I'm like, you know what? I'm getting the hang of this, <laughs> like, because around that time, around that time, that's when I, uh, you know, um, I got closer to God, mm -hmm. and and you know, so, you know, once you have God, you feel rich no matter what you're going through. Right. Yeah. So at that point, at that at that moment, it wasn't even that hard. You know, I got a job, and I'm at my job. I was shower, showering in my job. Nobody knew nothing. I did have a car, and it just it was. But, yeah. But then you know, I made it through, and and it really, it really, I always look back at that at that moment. You know. Well, congrats, brother. Really? Congratulations! I'm glad you made it through it. Nah, thank you, thank you. Um, you know, that's why I always say God first, everything second. That's right. Like, that's right. All you gotta do is just give thanks to God, and yeah, he's gonna come through. That's the way I see it. For real. That's right. You just gotta be strong enough for to go through the process that he's gonna put you through to get to the other side. But once you do it, it's all right, but you gotta trust the process. But anyway, back to boxing. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yay. I mean, he you answered the, the questions that for as a prospect. As a pro, do you want me to call you a prospect or you, you, that's, you a contender already? Because call me champ. <laughs> I, you're a champ. 
Now, but hey, he, I, that's the way I'm going. I'm going to call you anyway, Chad. Prospect, like prospects, right, man? One of the hottest prospects. Right. I agree. Who else accomplished what you accomplished as a in, in two fights? You you have more wars in the in the gym with champions. Yeah. Than than anybody else. So, well, all of them. Nah, facts, facts. I mean, on I think on the same on the same week. He, you had a picture. There's a picture of Devin Haney and you. There's another picture of you in Shakur. Then you 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 in Florida, you know, um, with, with Adrian Broner. Right was, after, right after my fight, I think it was a. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, it was like three or four days after I flew out, and you know, sparred and you know, did my thing over there right after my pro debut with the Devin Haney one. Yeah. Let me who's who's um let me let, let me tell 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 me any sparring to any any sparring stories, huh? You can't do that. That's politically incorrect in this business. I was gonna say, I, I, right? I especially disagree. when you especially wow. when know when you dealing with the champions, you know, because you want to. Nah, to you mean like any type of sparring story, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, if if it's good, work, if, all right. Don't don't tell me don't tell me the because you know there's a there's the unwritten law, right? Right. So. About uh, champions, though, I could tell you about some anybody else, though, right? No, 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 no. I just don't gotta say no name. When it comes to sparring, oh, because this is a business. You want to get your sparring. That's what help you get better. And if you be little in sparring, then you know it's harder to get you good work. All right. So who's who? All right. Let me just say that who's harder, um, Shakur or Devin? I mean, that ain't (laughs) that ain't too bad, right? To answer that one, both gotta be politically correct. But uh, the thing, it would be a good fight between them two. But yeah, I would love to see it. Yeah, because you because you could gauge it. Right. Somebody somebody's gonna ask you that question <laughs> later down the line. They I got that question so many times already. But I can tell y'all this: they both got their attributes, and the thing that make it good is that they both could adjust. Like it's five styles of boxing, and the masters learn all five styles of boxing. Mm. Where some people only know one style at the most, two styles. The fact that they know them, they could play with them like chess. So you will see a chess match in there, but it'd be very competitive. So yeah, it's who could beat who to the punch. And that's who will win that fight. And that's why it would be so good. They're on the same playing field. Damn, but I well, doubt if that would ever time. happen because they would stay out of each other's way because they understand that. Mm, okay, okay. All right. So all five styles. That's why it makes it harder for them to just dominate us. That's why I say, you know, both. Yeah, both. Okay, okay, all right, all right. Um, have you ever have you ever um worked work with Floyd, Floyd Mayweather? Nah, but I got to FaceTime right before my pro debut, like while I was getting my hands wrapped. That's the only he time faced, I really met Floyd. Yeah, he FaceTimed you. Yeah, but um, yeah, man, that's that that must have felt, you know. Man, it, it felt. <laughs> I felt like Floyd. I felt like Pretty Boy Floyd versus Arturo Gotti that night. <laughs> That's you gotta perform. You gotta give us that that you gotta give us your own version of of of, of pretty boy. But your own version, I don't want to compare you to nobody, but you gotta give us that, that that excitement. I think that's how you, you know, gonna win over the fans. And yeah. if there's a lot of great boxers out there. I, I don't think they are winning over the fans. If you really think about it, I think that there's a lot of great fights, but the once that great fight has everybody got their eyeballs on that fight, they're not actually bringing in more fans. It's all right, the hardcore boxing fans is content, but there, I don't think there's a lot of boxers out there that's bringing in that casual fan. We need that excitement, you know. Right. You're gonna right. bring that, you're gonna bring that fuzz, my brother. Yeah, right. Boys. I was just about to say that. <laughs> <laughs> they need to tune in then. They're gonna see them some good, exciting, classic boxing where it's a fight in there. It ain't no game. It's hurt this person before they could try to hurt you. So they're not gonna be wasting their money. Facts, facts, facts. But brother, man, it was it was great. It was great talking to you, man. Where, where can every, everybody everybody find you and your social media platforms? Uh kid underscore Austin one. Uh my Instagram, my Facebook, Floyd Schofield the third. My website, floydscofield.com. And if, you know, the other fighters or whatnot want to see me on Warzone, they can text <laughs> me. <laughs> My son probably going to see you over there. Oh, yeah. What, he on PS4? Yeah. 
Okay, yeah, he can get the work. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Thank thank you. Thank you. Okay. And um and more power to 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 Pops as well. Okay. Y'all doing a great thing. Can't wait to see this collaboration, the new son. And, and let me ask you this, so who you think is the, right now the best son, son and father collaboration? Other than y'all. Other than y'all. I was going to say, you finna know my answer. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> other than y'all, who's the best it's son? And, who? Lopez. His dad called the whole thing through and lived it out. It has and to you be. know, like the stuff that they was going through, they was able to overcome it, you know, That's come back right. together and win all those titles. So I feel like that's a real big accomplishment, you know, being able to like, you know, have a family disagreement and whatnot, and, you know, be off for a little while with each other, but end up coming back and, you know, making big accomplishments. But congrats to all the dads for standing there being dads and raising real men and sons. So any dad that's doing it, congrats and keep doing it. What he said. Facts. <laughs> Facts. Man, thank you, my brother. I appreciate it. Modern day wars, modern day gladiators. You put your life on the line for pure entertainment. Thank you. Thank uh, you. And looking forward to see you see more of you, my brother. You too. Thank you. You're welcome, bro. All right.